The Overwatch 2 beta is here and there have been a lot of hero balance changes as well as overall changes to the core mechanics of the game. It's 5v5 instead of 6v6, tanks are more brawly, and there are fewer barriers and less CC. But one of the biggest changes that will affect how the game is played is the addition of overhealth to the different types of HP a hero can have. My name is KarQ, and in this video I'm going to go over the difference between the four different types of HP in Overwatch 2. Health, Armor, Shield, and Overhealth as soon as I finish a word from our sponsor Esports Tower. If you're a young but serious competitive Overwatch 2 player and looking for a more organized club and community, then Esports Tower is perfect for you. They're an online community to help serious players like you to improve on a week-by-week -week basis through coaching, tutorials, and industry networking with other pros, GMs, collegiate coaches, and recruiters. After joining, you'll be paired with other like-minded teammates of similar skill and receive a team coach. From there, you'll practice twice a week to prepare for weekly competitive events. These coaches will correct mistakes through VOD reviews and teach you the foundations of teamwork, communication, and leadership, which are important skills both in and outside of the game. It's the perfect opportunity to experience organized tournaments, exclusive events, and work your way towards collegiate opportunities and maybe one day the Overwatch League. Go to esportstower.com slash for a free two-week trial. Link is in the description. Before diving into the different types of HP, we need to talk about the new support role passive. In a 5v5 environment with less peeling, supports need to be able to survive on their own, and the new role passive allows them to do just that. All supports will now start recovering 15 HP per second after not taking damage for one second up to their original max HP. This passive ability used to only apply to Mercy, who originally had a passive regeneration ability that healed her for 20 HP per second if she avoided taking damage. This new role passive combines with Mercy's specific passive ability, and her regeneration increases it by 50%, meaning she heals 22.5 HP per second after avoiding damage. The role passive stacks with other instances of healing as well, and can be modified by abilities that increase the amount of healing a hero receives. That means it can get boosted by Ana's Biotic Grenade, which increases healing received by 50%. Other examples include Brigitte's Inspire passive, Lucio's Healing Aura, Zenyatta's passive shield regeneration, and the healing granted by the payload on Hybrid and Escort maps. Okay, so with that in mind, let's dive into the first type of HP we have, called health. There haven't been any major changes to how standard health works in Overwatch 2, but it's always good to get a refresher. This is your run-of-the-mill average health bar, represented by the white portion of your hero's HP. Health doesn't regenerate on its own, unless you're playing a support hero with their new role passive regeneration. So, the only ways to restore it are 1. Getting healed by a hero ability from a teammate or yourself, 2. Grabbing a health pack, 3. Going back to your spawn room, and 4. Standing near the moving payload on attacking maps, which heals 10 HP per second. To be clear, the payload must be moving, meaning it won't heal you if you haven't captured the payload on a hybrid map like Eichenwald. Now let's talk about armor. There's only one type of armor in Overwatch 2, down from the two types of natural and temporary armor in Overwatch 1. Natural armor is something that is inherently part of a hero's kit, and there are a good amount of heroes that have armor as part of their HP pool. You have D.Va, Arisa, Reinhardt, Winston, Wrecking Ball, Bastion, Torbjorn, and Brigitte. Armor is a powerful type of HP because it reduces all incoming damage by 30% in Overwatch 2. It's actually much simpler now, because in Overwatch 1 it was a bit complicated, with damage being reduced by a flat 5 that switched over to a 50% damage reduction if the instance of damage was under 10 damage. Look at this graph. The green line is Overwatch 1, and the red line is Overwatch 2 when plotting for armor's effectiveness. Raw damage is on the x-axis, and the armor reduced damage is on the y. The point of intersection where armor has the same effectiveness in Overwatch 1 and 2 before they begin changing is at 16.667 damage. Since Overwatch rounds their numbers, let's just say 17 damage. To put it simply, first damage heroes are weaker in Overwatch 2 because armor is better against any instance of damage higher than 17. And then small pellet based heroes are stronger because armor is weaker when damage is under 17. Let's look at a few examples, like Farah's Rocket at 120 raw damage. In Overwatch 2, armored targets only take 
84 damage because of the 30% reduction. In Overwatch 1, it dealt 115 damage because of the flat minus 5. Reinhardt's swing normally deals 85 damage, so in Overwatch 2, he's only dealing 59.5 damage. That's why Ryan feels so ass when swinging against other armored tanks. Back in Overwatch 1, he was still dealing 80 damage. When we look in the left side and lower instances of raw damage, we can see that armor is less effective in Overwatch 2. That means heroes with pellets or small damages will be stronger. Diva, who deals 2 damage per pellet, only deals 1 damage in Overwatch 1. Diva in Overwatch 2, even with the 30% reduction, deals 1.4 per pellet. It's stronger. Tracer, who used to have 6 damage per pellet, actually had it nerfed to 5 in the beta. So even with the 30% damage reduction applied, it still deals 3.5 damage per bullet, which is still better. So hopefully after explaining and visualizing that, the graph here makes more sense to read. We can also plot the function that shows the relative percent change in damage between Overwatch 1 and 2 if the nerds want to pause and look at it. Now there are 7 more important notes to remember about armor. Number 1. Armor is the only type of HP that reduces the amount of damage you take. This means any overhealth you have above it will calculate normal damage taken until it gets to the armor portion and then it recalculates. For example, Widow Headshot does 300 damage. Brig gets 100 overhealth from Rally, so a headshot on Brig will take 100 off the top for the overhealth. Then it calculates the remaining 200 damage of the headshot with the armor layer underneath it at the 30% reduction, resulting in 140 remaining damage. That means in total you deal 240 damage out of the 300. Number 2. As long as you have a little bit of armor, that entire instance of damage has the reduction applied. That means Torb can effectively tank a Widowmaker headshot because 300 to the head normally gets reduced to 210. And Brig can survive the new Reinhardt charge at 225 base damage because it gets reduced to 157.5. Number 3. Armor reduction is calculated and applied at the end after all damage modifiers that includes damage boosts, BAP alt, headshots, etc. Number 4. Damage reduction by armor is separate and is not capped at 50%. That means if you get nano boosted as a Rhin for example, nano has a 50% damage reduction, you can multiply 30% more for the armor because it's separate. Cassidy here would deal 24.5 damage out of 70 like so. As a reminder, outside of armor, damage reduction is capped at 50%, resulting in Cassidy dealing 35 damage here, which is half of 70, despite being under both Fortify at 40% reduction and Nano Boost at 50% reduction. It only takes the highest amount at 50 and is capped. Number 5. Torb is the only rule breaker for armor's defensive properties, since his sticky stuff actually deals more against it from 160 normally to 250 against armor. Number 6. All beam type damage is still reduced by 30% on armor, which was a late change added in Overwatch 1 back in August of 2020. So nothing actually changed here for Overwatch 2. Just for your own notes, this actually applies to May's primary fire, Mora's alternate fire and coalescence, Symmetra's primary fire and her sentry, Winston and his primary fire, and Zarya and her primary fire. And number 7, a big one. Damage over time effects, or DOTs, are now affected by armor again. So back in March of 2019, they actually changed it so DOT effects like these would deal full damage to armored targets in Overwatch 1. But in Overwatch 2, this is no longer the case, and the following heroes got indirectly nerfed again as a result. Ana now deals 49 damage instead of 70. Ash's Dynamite deals 105 instead of 150. Hanzo's alt deals 210 per second instead of 300, and even less at 105 per second if you're standing on the edge of it in one dragon. May's Blizzard deals 59.5 damage instead of 85 for the whole duration. Moira's Biotic Orb deals 35 instead of 50 per second, which is, still has a maximum of 200 though. Widow's Venom Mine deals 52.5 damage instead of 75 total. And Zarya's Grab deals 14 damage instead of 20. This one is super minor. Armor was a long one, but this one's quick. Let's go to the third kind of HP in Overwatch, which is shields. They show up as a light blue portion of the health bar. Shields are a little different from health because they do regenerate after not taking damage, so they're easily restorable. If you can stay safe for 3 seconds, you'll start regenerating your shields at a rate of 30 shield HP per second. There are only 4 heroes in the game currently that have natural shield health. 
Sigma, Zarya, Symmetra, and Zenyatta. Those heroes are able to take a little bit of poke damage before a team fight and be just fine before it starts if they can find some cover. Shields stack on top of your standard health, which means if you take too much damage, you can actually lose some of your white health before they regenerate and be left with a little bit less than full HP. The only exception is Zenyatta, which when combined with the support passive of 15 HP per second now, can effectively heal 45 HP per second. There used to be a second type of shield HP in Overwatch 1 known as Temporary Shields, which were indicated by a dark blue portion of a hero's HP bar. It used to be generated or granted by a handful of hero abilities, but have since been replaced by Overhealth in Overwatch 2. Overhealth refers to all temporary forms of HP increase that takes a hero beyond their original maximum HP. So this includes Doomfist's passive, Orisa's Fortify, which is new, Sigma's Kinetic Grasp, Wrecking Ball's Adaptive Shield, Torbjorn's Overload, Brigitte's Rally, and Lucio's Sound Barrier. Temp Shields and Temp Armor have been removed from the game and turned into Overhealth health, which means there is no longer any damage mitigation gained from the old temp armor you would normally get from Briggs Rally or Torb's Overload for example, so those are indirect nerfs to those heroes. Overhealth is basically the same as standard health with two exceptions. Number one, it decays over time, and this decay is specific to the ability that grants the overhealth, such as Sigma's Kinetic Grasp, which is a slower decay over time, or Lucio's Ultimate, which instantly begins to decay. The second exception is that overhealth doesn't grant alt charge, so any damage you do isn't going to charge your ultimate any faster, which is a huge game changer for the ultimate economy, especially with the way alts seem to take so long to build now. Overhealth is always the first stacked HP bar on the far side of the right to take damage, which is then followed by armor and shields, and then finally health. There's no priority anymore for armor versus shields because there aren't any heroes that exist in the game that have both natural shields and armor for now. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it informative and a fresh update to the videos I've made back in 2019 and 2017 if you've been following me for a long time. Big shout out to Dragon Engineer for helping me with the graph functions as well as the rest of the Elo Hell Workshop Discord people for chiming in. Please add a workshop to Overwatch 2 Blizzard.